Okay guys, this is Mike, Whiskey Alpha 9, Papa India Echo, or VK4 EIE. <clears throat> I'm going to I'm going to demonstrate uh, some aspects of the Ham Radio Deluxe Rotator app. And uh, we get questions about this from time to time. And folks will say, what do I have to do to set up a 450 degree rotor? And the short answer is, in software, nothing. <laughs> but I want to talk about that a little bit. So as you can see, I've got the camera pointed at. Um, I've got a, um, a Yaesu uh, G1000S, or sorry, G1000 DXC rotor controller box with a GS232B interface, and I've got um, the uh, G1000 rotor here. And what we're going to do is uh, kind of run through the um, process here. And um, first of all, one of the things to know, notice is in the software, you know, once upon a time, several years ago, we tried out Smart the Rotor controllers. And um, we tried to figure out, I, I think, I wasn't involved in it at the time, but it seems like somebody tried to figure out how to outsmart the controller. And it led to nothing but problems. Um, I talked to a number of uh, rotor manufacturers. Um, I talked to uh, the Yesu folks, the High Gain folks, M Squared. Um, the gentleman at M Squared was extremely helpful. Um, talked to the guy at Portable Rotation. Everybody said the same thing. That is, you don't have to do any of this in software. The controller, the rotor controller, can handle it. So in terms of rotating past 360 and, uh, and, and so on, the controller is meant to manage that. So, and I'll show here in a little bit. I mean, if you're at 355 degrees and you want to go to 45 degrees, the controller knows whether to rotate clockwise or counterclockwise. So um, I've got the rotor sitting here. Um, we're going to pretend this is north over here. Um, so uh, so that we can kind of have a reference point. So just pretend that this is in the northerly direction. And I've got a, a, an arrow on this, so maybe you can see it. But that's north. And um, so I'm going to go and um, make some, uh, make some uh, observations out of, the, out of the manual. First of all, in the GS232 interface manual, um, one of the pieces that I left out that was causing me some trouble in calibrating the rotor, first of all, there's a calibration process that calibrates the rotor to the controller box. Then there's another one that calibrates the controller box to the interface, and you have to do them both. Um, so I'm going to go down here to uh, a page that shows what to do to um, calibrate your rotor uh, controller or your, your rotor box to the interface. And so there's a process here from the controller, set the rotor fully counterclockwise to zero. That's where I've got it. Just make sure it's at zero. And press letter O. So basically, although it didn't, it kind of skipped some steps here, um, you're supposed to turn up a, a basically a um, terminal session with the rotor controller. I'm going to use putty but you can use just about anything you want. Okay, so now I'm going to go through this process. I'll hit O, and I'll say yes, I will do the uh, AZ offset. So basically, you got to have the rotor turned at zero, and then you're there, and then it says next thing I should do is rotate it fully clockwise. So I'm going to use the preset and just take it all the way around to the right.
Okay, so I'm all the way to the right. If you put an F, it'll tell you where the rotor's pointed to. So basically, the next step is it wants you to point the rotor all the way over to 450 degrees, which I'll do. I'll just hit the preset. And you'll see as it's rotating, the rotor is reporting back its, um, its asthma. And you can see as it's turning through 90 degrees, about the time it gets to 180 degrees, the arrow is pointing at the camera. And we got past 180. And I could speed this up a little bit, but I got the, the rotor turned up to high speed. It shouldn't take too long. But the gist of it is, is that there's a there's an adjustment on the back of the G1000 um, DXC box that um, basically helps you get to the point to where you know that it's um, it's correct. So it's showing 449. I could I could adjust it. Um, basically, I would take a, a screwdriver and get behind it and adjust it. Um, I'm not going to mess with it right now. So I'm going to reach around behind the rotor, and I think I know which one is which, but um, I'm going to pull this out for a second and uh, kind of turn it sideways so I can see the, the business end of this. And um, so this one's the one you want to adjust. So um, I'm going to... Um, I flip this over into a, 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 I think I can just do it right here. And so as I as I adjust this, watch what happens to the response up here on the rotor. There's went a little bit too high. It's real kind of touchy. So I'm gonna adjust it back down a little bit. Too far. As you can see, this is that's why I was tempted not to do this, but. Um, It's kind of important if you want this thing to read properly in the software. You have to basically, there we go. Oops. <laughs> um, there we go. So that's, that's all dialed in. So now when the rotor is fully over to the um, 450 degree spot now we know that the um, controller will actually report back the right azimuth again that's all the kind of stuff that you have to do it has nothing to do with the ham radio deluxe software it's just that unless you do that it's not going to work properly just going to hit enter here now I'm going to rotate back to about 355 or something just shy of that. Okay. So another thing to, to look at in the manual is okay then we notice um, P45 is to set mode to 450 degrees. P36 is to set it to 360 degrees so and then before we use the rotator we've got it configured so if I go to tools options this is all you have to do you just got to make sure it's got the correct COM port setting here that's good you don't need to set the stop range like I said the controller is going to handle that if you're um, if your rotor has gone out of adjustment, you can set an offset here. You can also set that within the configuration. So once you've got this done, you're ready to connect. And all you have to do is come up here and click on the connect button. And it's going to go to wherever you left it. Okay, so at the moment I got the rotor at 355. And I want to go to... Let's say I want to go to 
60 degrees. So the rotor knows the controller, the rotor controller, this box right here, these, this equipment uh, together, know where the rotor is now, or was, and it knows that the easiest way, the shortest way, to get to 60 degrees is to go clockwise. So um, you can see this is basically pointed clockwise. Um, if uh, if I were at say, you know, I'm going to go to 210. Now I'm, I'm going to 230. And it knows it can't rotate around through 90 degrees. It's going to come back around again. So I'm at 2.30. And now if I go to 55, it knows that the easiest way to get there is to go counterclockwise. So all we really did is send the command to the rotor and told it to go to 55. The rotor controller got to decide where it was going to go right or left, clockwise or counterclockwise. Now if I go over into logbook, I can connect it here. If I click on a spot, say for example this guy here, and if it comes back with the uh, little car icon here, I can click this and it'll turn the rotor for me to 151 degrees, which is what's shown here. So we can see it's showing 151 degrees up here. Um, if I pick a different uh, station, let's say I, I go to this one, and uh, maybe I want to put him in the logbook. So I click on logbook up here. It's one way to do it. And once the and once the log entry form comes up. I can press on the locator button right here and it'll rotate me back around to 48 degrees which is what um, what's showing here for the short path. Good! So that's exactly what we needed it to do. So uh, it's pretty much that easy. You just gotta uh, you got to make sure the controller is properly configured or nothing you do is going to work and um, makes it quite simple but I frankly I missed it in the um, in the uh, instructions so there you have it this is Mike WA9PIE 73's